number one find the principal which amounts to 5000 naira at simple interest in five years at two percent per annum let's list what we are given we have the amount as 5005 the principal is what we are looking for the time is five years and the rate is two percent now interests simple interest is principal times rate times time over 100 in this formula we have our t we have our r we don't have our i and p okay we also have another formula that amount equals principal plus interest from there i can say interest is equal to amount minus principal so we have two different formula for interest from what we are given the aptr we don't have i there so we can equate the two formulas that a minus p which is still interest is equal to prt over 100 now putting the values we have 5500 for a minus p equals p r is 5 t is 2 then we have over 100 so um on the left we still have 5500 minus p equals 5 times 2 is 10 so the numerator is 10 p over 100 so i have 5500 minus p equals 0.1 p the minus p can go to the right that's plus p so we have 1.1 p equals 5500 p is 5000 naira so the option is option a The car dealer bought a second-hand car for 250000 spent 70000 refurbishing it. He then sold the car for 400000 naira. What is the percentage gain? Okay. The total expenses, we have 250000 plus 70000 That amounts to 320000 Then, the profit will be the amount is sold is the selling price minus the cost. The cost is the total expenses. That is equal to 80,000. Our percentage profit is profit over cost times 100 over 1. That equals 80,000 divided by 320,000 times 100. That will give us 25% and that is option B. Evaluate 21.05347 minus 1.6324 multiplied by 0 0.43 to three decimal places we have a board mass here because we have two operations minus and multiplication so going by what we have multiplication and subtraction so we have to start with multiplication so we are starting with the red text 1.6324 times 0 0.43 that will give us 0 0.701732 so we can now subtract that from 21.05347 that will give us 20.351538 remember we asked to do, to do three decimal places on the third number on the after the decimal point is one five is more than five is what approximating so we can have 20.352 as our answer that is option b evaluate 0 0.14 square times 0 0.275 over 7 into bracket 0 0.02 correct to three decimal places if you look at this very well seven to make it fast 0 7 into 0 0.02 is the same thing as 0 0.14 so um the 0 0.14 down can cancel one of the one up so we have just 0 0.14 left times 0 0.25 with multiplying this with the calculator we have 0 0.0385 to three decimal places that will be 0 0.039 which is option b number five given that p equals one plus square root of two and q equals one minus square root of two Evaluate P square minus Q square over 2PQ. So we have P square minus Q square over 2PQ. We put in the values for P. 1 plus square root of 2 all square minus that of Q. 1 minus root 2 all square. 
everything over 2 into p which is 1 plus root 2 another bracket for q 1 minus root 2 we have something like difference of two squares look at the red text x square minus y square equals x minus y x plus y so we can apply that for both numerator and denominator numerator is going to be expressed giving our answer in the form of what we have on the right hand side y denominator will be giving our answer in form of what we have on the left so for numerator we have for the minus part we have one plus root two and one minus root two the other one one plus root two one minus root two plus in between them so we have a minus and another one a plus then for the denominator like i said we go with what we write up on the right that's one square minus root two all square so for numerator the one and my one the one we cancel out we have one minus one that is off so it's remaining root two plus root two the minus we change to plus the two minus that's two root two on the other side the root two and root two we cancel out so we have one plus one two then denominator we have two into brackets one square is one square root of two square is two leaving us with two root two over minus one because the two there's a two up and there's another two down they can cancel each other so we have minus two root two and that is option c if y over 2 equals x evaluate this so we are y over 2 is equal to x we can easily say that y is equal to 2x so let's put that inside what we are asked to evaluate so we have x cubed over y is now 2x so that's 2x all raised to power 3 plus half divided by half minus x square is still x square so y is 2x as well all raised to power 2 so um x cube over 2 cube is 8 the x will also take the cube plus half on the other uh, from the other bracket we have half minus x square 2 square is 4 with the x square so the x cube we cancel out from the first bracket we have 1 over 8 left on the from the second bracket the x square will also cancel out we have 1 over 4 if we add 1 over 8 and 1 over 2 we get this lcm is 8 8 divided by 8 1 the other one 8 divided by 2 4 the same thing on the from the bracket on the right 4 is the lcm 4 divided by 2 2 times 1 2 and the other one is 1 so we have 5 over 8 divided by 1 over 4 that's 5 over 8 times 4 over 1 and that will be 5 over 2 which is option d Simplify cube root of 64 a raised to the power 3 or raised to the power minus 1. So we have the question as this. Cube root of 64 is 4. That's what we multiply 3 times to give us 64, 4. Cube root of a cube. The cube root, we cancel the cube on the a. That's a. So we have all raised to the power minus 1. So that will be 1 over 4a. And that is option C. Factorize 4x squared minus 9y squared plus 20x plus 25. In a question, in the case of a question like this, we may not be able to use any technique to solve the question. So we might have to open the brackets one after the other. If you so we are going to use substitution option. So if you try multiplying each bracket, you will get this option: 2x minus 3y plus y into bracket 2x plus 3y plus 5 and that will be option d y equals px squared plus q and y equals 2x squared minus 1 intersects at x equals 2 find the value of p in terms of q the fact that they said they intersect means the two we equate both of them so px squared plus q can be equal to 2x squared minus 1. Now from what we have here, um, we can substitute our x equals 2 given in the question. We're told that they intersect at 2. That will be p into 2 squared plus q 
the other side 2 into 2 square minus 1. So we have 4p plus q equals 8 minus 1. Um, 4p plus q is equal to 7. We are trying to make p the subject of the formula. So 4p will be 7 minus q and that will be p equals 7 minus q divided by 4, which we have as option D. We are given the equation m squared plus n squared equals 27 and m plus n equals 7. This is another question that we can actually solve this using one linear quadratic simultaneous equation. But the best thing to do to save time is to go with substitution. And we have the simpler equation as m plus n. Like I said, it's a one linear, one quadratic simultaneous equation. Well, let's use the substitution method. So um, we have option A, B, C, and D. So let's try option A. Option A, we have 5, 2. 5 is for the first letter M. 2 is for the second letter N. So if I try 5 plus 2, I will get 7. Okay? 5 plus 3, I will not get 7. That's the second bracket. So that option is not going to work. Going by this equation, M plus N equals to 7. So that option is out. The second option, 5 plus 3, that one is definitely out. So we are going, we are not going for that. The third option, 2 plus 3 will not give us 7. So that is also out. But the last option, 2 plus 5 will give us 7. 5 plus 2 will also give us 7. If we want to confirm, if we use the second equation, the first equation, which is m squared plus n squared equals 29. 2 squared plus 5 squared, that will be 4 plus 25, 29. The other one we also give the answer so the answer is option d divide a raised to power 3x minus 26 a raised to a raised to power 2x plus 156 a raised to power x by 216 minus 216 by a raised to power 2x minus 24 ax plus 108 so we have this the best thing to do is to reduce the problem let our a raised to bar x be y. So I will have it as y cubed minus 26y square plus 156 minus 216. The other one y square 24 y plus 108. So um, we have to go by the long division method of polynomials. We have this as our dividend and we have our divisor. Now, from this device, so y square minus 24y plus 108, we only divide with y square, but we multiply with everything. So, y square, now y cube inside the dividends, y cube divided by y square, we give us y. So, y times y square and others will be y cube, y times 24y will be minus 24y square, y times 108 is 108y. So, we subtract. The y cube is off. So we are left with minus 26 minus minus 24. That is minus 26 plus 24. That's minus 2. And then the other one, 156 minus 108, we have 48. So we bring down the next name, which is minus 216. We go again. Y square in minus 2y square. That will be minus 2. So minus 2 to multiply everything. From the divisor, we have minus 2y squared plus 48y minus 216. Everything is the same. So if we subtract, we are left with 0. So our answer after dividing is y minus 2. Remember, y is a raised to power x. So we can take that to be a raised to power x minus 2. And that is giving us option C. So if we have to find the integral values of x and y, satisfying the inequalities 3y plus 5x is less than or equal to 15 we'll be going with the approach of substitution so we have option a b c and d now for option a the first thing we have is 1 comma 1 the one is x the one the other one is also y so if i put that into the equation inequalities we have 3 into 1 plus 5 into 1 that's 3 plus 5, 8. That seems correct. The other one, 2, 1. That's 2 for x, 1 for y. 
that's 3 plus 10 that seems correct the last one 3 1 and um, 3 for x 1 for y that's 3 into 1 5 into 3 that's that will be 3 plus 15 that's 18 that's that is wrong so that's why it is in red so option a is cancelled let's go for option b similarly we've done one comma one so that's fine um one comma two let's try that that will be three into two plus five into one that's six plus five eleven we have done three comma one let's just save time um that is not correct option c now one comma one is correct we've done that one comma two we've just done that um two comma one that will be three into one for x five into two that seems correct because that's three plus 10 that's 13 so option d will definitely be wrong so the answer is option c we have to solve the in linear inequalities in the diagram now um let's start with 2y minus x minus 2 however the solution required from us is spt and that is the point with the circle red spt the triangle form there so we are starting with 2y minus x minus 2 that point is below the line the line for 2y minus x minus 2 so we take that to be less than or equal to because it is below also y plus 2x plus 2 that point is also below so we take that as well, as well to be less than or equal to 2 and um, on the x-axis we have the triangle to be above so we use x to get y so that will be y greater than or equal to zero and finally on the y-axis we have it on the left so we are like we use x to get y we definitely use y to get x so that will be x is less than or equal to zero if you look at all these options they are all pointing towards option A. We have to, the sixth term of, a, of an arithmetic progression is half of the twelfth term. So we are asked to get an expression for the first term. Sixth term, T6 is half T12. T6 is A plus 5D. T12 is A plus 11D. If I cross multiply 2 times A plus 5D on the right, A plus 11D. So open the bracket, 10, 2A plus 10D equals a plus 11d collecting like terms on the left 2a minus a 11d minus 10d we have a equals d a is the first term d is a common difference so going by the question the first term is equal to the common difference and that is option c um saves the savings of 100 naira in the first year of work and each year saves 20 naira more than in the preceding what we have in the preceding year so what do we have when do we have 5800 um first year is if like the first term 100 naira it saves more 20 naira that's the common difference and the sum of 5800 naira we don't know the number of years that's our n now this is an arithmetic progression question so we are using the formula for sum of an ap as you can see so our sn is 5800 n is unknown so we have 2 times 100 as a then n minus 1 d is 20 the 2 can cross multiply the 5800 the bracket 2 times 100 is 200 20 n minus 20 so we have 1160 on the left n into 180 plus 20 n if I divide everything by 20 because 20 can go, I'll be left with 580 equals n into 9 plus n. That's 580 equals 9n plus 9 plus n squared. Now, um, I can arrange it to have this. The best thing to do is substitute n as the option because if we go by solving this it will take time so let me start with 20 so this is n as 20 um i will have this and the answer will be equal to zero so that is option a 
an operation asterisk is defined on the set of real numbers a operation b equals a plus b plus one if identity is minus one find the inverse of the element two so we have a operation b equals a plus b plus one now a operation a inverse is equal to identity that's the formula so i can say that a operation a inverse putting it on the left that means a will be a a inverse will be b so we have a plus a inverse plus one our b has been replaced with that a inverse and that is equal to identity given as minus one so we are looking for two so let's take our a to be two so two plus two inverse plus one is minus one on the left i have two inverse plus three because two plus one is three i cannot add the two inverse two inverse will be minus one minus three and that is minus four which is option a we have to look for the identity elements in this table the identity element is just the one arranged if you look at what we have under m vertically klm arranged so we take that then if you look at horizontally as well under m we also have klm arranged according to what you have at the top so the identity element is under m so that's equal to m option c given this matrix we have to look for k square plus k plus one now that is k square that's two three one four we square it so if i'm to square it i'll multiply the matrix by itself two times two we multiply row by column two one that's a row the first row the first column on the second in the second matrix is two three so the two we multiply the two and the one we multiply the three so two times two is four one times three is three that's a four plus three again that two one on the first row of the first matrix i will also use it to multiply one four two times one two one times four four then um on the second row three times two six four times three twelve three times one three four times four sixteen so we still have the other matrix i is identity matrix for a two by two matrix and that is one zero zero one so we we, we simplify the one on the left first four plus three is seven two plus four is six six plus twelve is eighteen three plus sixteen is nineteen now adding this now we position each le each element on in the matrix with different colors so we are adding seven two and one that will give us ten we are adding six one and zero that's seven eighteen three and zero that's twenty one 19 14 and 1 that is 24 and that is option b as we evaluate this matrix we are looking for the determinant now we apply a method called soros method which is we write the the element of the matrix we now include the first two columns which is minus 1 3 1 and minus 1 1 2 those are the first two columns so we now form a diagonal um you can see them then the other diagonal from the left from the right to the left we have them like this so on the first diagonal we have minus one times one times one we multiply all that that's minus one second diagonal from the left minus one minus one one will give us plus one minus one three two will give us minus six then from the right we have minus one we have plus two when we multiply then we have minus three the first bracket will give us minus six and we simplify the second one will give us minus two minus six plus two is minus four and so we have that to be option c we have to evaluate minus two p from the matrix we have our p so we just multiply everything with minus two that will be minus six four minus 8 minus 10 0 minus 12 minus 4 minus 10 and 2 which is option d find the number of sides of a regular polygon whose interior angle is twice the exterior angle 
we know that interior plus exterior is 180. So I can say I plus E equals 180. Also, interior is 2 times exterior according to this question, meaning that I is equal to 2E. If I put that into the first equation, I as 2E, I will have 2E plus E is equal to 180. 3E equals 180, E is equal to 60. That's what we are asked. Okay, E is equal to 60. So we can now go for the number of sides is equal to 360 over exterior. That's a formula. The number of sides of any polygon is 360 divided by the exterior angle. So we have 360 divided by 6, and that is equal to 6 sides. We are asked to um, solve for angle RST. PQ is QT. Okay, the fact that PQ is QT, we have PTQ to be 25. It's an isosceles triangle and the base angles will be equal. Now, so we have PQPT also to be plus PTQ to be equal to SQR. When you add two angles inside a triangle, it will give the exterior of the third side. So the two angles are inside a smaller triangle is QPT and PTQ. That will give us the exterior, the outside of Q, which is the third angle, and that is SQR. So we have that's the theorem sum of two interior equals opposite exterior. So 25 plus 25 for SQR equals 50. So we are looking for RST. SQR, SRQ, and RST will give us 180. That is angle in a triangle. So we have 50 plus 75 plus RST to be 180. RST will be 180 minus 125, which is 55 degrees. That leaves us with option D. A cylindrical tank of capacity 3080, uh, we have it, what's the depth of the tank if the diameter is 14? We don't usually work with diameter, we work with radius. So R is 14 over 2, that's 7. So the volume of a cylinder is pi R square H, 3080, 22 over 7 times 7 times 7, the radius times H. The 7 in red cancel out, we have 3080 equals 154 H. H equals 20 meters. Option A. A sector of circle of radius 7.2 centimeter sustains an angle of 300 at the center to form a cone. What's the radius? Now, length of the arc will form the circumference of the cone base. Length of arc is theta over 360 times 2 pi r. The circumference of a cone, since it's still a, since it's still a circle, we have it as 2 pi r. So theta from the question is 300. 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius is 7.2 according to the question for the sector then we have 2 22 over 7 times r for the cone the 2 and 22 over 7 can cancel out from both sides so we are left with 300 over 360 times 7.2 equals r that will give us 6 centimeter option a the chord st of a circle is equal to the side of the radius so find the length of arc st okay we have a circle we have the chord st now we want to form our radius r of course r now since the chord and this the radius are the same the chord is st so the chord will also take r so we have it we have three equal sides we have an equilateral triangle so the angles in each of them as we know is 60 degrees so we can get the length of the arc now which is theta over 360 times 2 pi r and that is 60 over 360 times 2 pi r which is 120 pi r over 360 that's 120 over 360 is 1 over 3 so we have pi r over 3 option b we have a point p moves such that it is equidistant from q and r find qr pr is 8 so angle pqr is 30 so let's try to draw a sketch. We have QR, then we have P being equidistance. Since our PR is 8, we can also have our PQ to be 8. Then the angle in the question for PRQ is 30. We are looking for QR, that's P. But the angle at Q will also be 30 because it's an isosceles triangle. 
and as well the remaining angle will be 120 when we add all the angles we should be getting 180 degrees we apply sine rule so p over sine 120 equals q8 over sine 30 if i cross multiply i have this then sine 30 is 0 0.5 sine 120 is root 3 over 2 so that um, 0 0.5 p is 4 root 3 then p is 4 root 3 over 0 0.5 that is h root 3 option d find the locus of the point which which moves such that it is a distance from the line y equals 4 is a constant k now going by the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus c from what we have here because it's because k is a constant it could increase or it could decrease an equation of the line c is a constant so that means I'm having a plus or minus k. So uh, y is equal to 4. That's the other part of the equation, mx. So we have 4 plus or minus k, option d. Um, a line makes an angle of 30 degrees with a positive x axis. Cut the y axis at y equals to 5. Find the equation of a straight line. So we still stick with the equation of a straight line y equals mx plus c from the equation we have an angle so our m can be tan theta tan 30 is 1 over root 3 so c is 5 because that is where it intersects the y axis the intercept c so if we put all that we have 1 over root 3x plus 5 equals y clear the fraction we have root, root 3y plus x equals 5 root 3 so we have root 3 y is equal to x plus 5 root 3 and that is option a p e and q two ends of the diameter we have to calculate the radius first let's get the distance between p and q going back with this formula distance within two points we put our values there we have x2 to be 6.2 is q point one is p so we have x 6 minus minus 6 the other one 6 minus 1 that will be 12 because 6 minus minus is plus that's 12 6 minus 1 is 5 square root of 144 plus 25 that's square root of 169 which is 13 so what we have is the diameter so we need to get the radius which is diameter over 2 that's 13 over 2 which is 6.5 option b Find the value of P if the line joining P comma 4 and P comma 6 comma minus 2 is perpendicular to the line. Now we have this to be the formula for slope and slope. However, we have a condition for perpendicularity, which is m1 equals minus 1 over m2. That will make me to modify the formula. I will keep the slope of the left, but the slope of the right, I will invert it. That means the x2 and x1 will go up the y will come down and i will include a negative sign going by the condition for perpendicularity so i will have this putting my y and my x so that will be minus 6 over 6 minus p equals 3 because we have a minus 3 at the numerator the minus will change it to plus 3 3 minus p i can divide the numerators by 3 since both of them three can go so three in minus six is minus two the other one is one then i cross multiply here minus six p my plus two p equals six minus p collecting like terms you have two p plus p six plus six three p is twelve p is four that is option c bearing of p and q from a common point n are zero to zero and three hundred respectively if p and q are also equidistant from n find the bearing of p from q let's start with the sketch n now the n is a bearing to p 20 degrees so it that terminates at p we have our 20 degrees then for 300 we have 90 90 90 and 30 because each quadrant is 30 so it will terminate in the fourth quadrant so we have 30 there and that is leaving us with 60 inside the triangle the other side so we have our point q joining the two we have that then we are told we're told that the two sides are equidistant so we have q n 
and Pn to be equal. The question is asking us for the bearing of P from Q, and that is a point indicated as theta with this angle. Okay, since we have the two angles to be equal, because two sides are equal, let's label each of them XX. So also remember that the sum of angles in a triangle is X plus X plus 80, according to this, equals 180. So 2X is 100, X is 50. If you also look at the triangle very well, we have this point at 60, because the other 60 is alternate to it. So we can say that theta plus x plus 60 equals 180. So that theta will be 50 plus 60 plus is equal to 180. Theta will be equal to 180 minus 110, and that is 70. So theta we are looking for is 70. The option is option C. Of theta in the diagram above, we have three sides. We are looking for one angle, so we can make use of cosine rule. So square root of 3t all square equals t square t square minus 2t t cos theta. If you square the square root of 3, you get 3 with the t square. Then we add the t square t square, we have 2t square minus 2t square as well cos theta. Bringing the 2t square alone to the right, we have that. So that will give us t square equals minus 2t square. So we can divide both sides by minus 2t square. So we have 1 over minus 2. Then theta will be equal to, cos theta will be equal to minus 0 0.5. Theta will be 120 degrees. And that is option D. We have to differentiate this. So we have that to be y equals 2x plus 5 or raised to power 2x minus 4. We can take it to be the form y equals uv. So that our u is 2x plus 5 square, our v is x minus 4. If I differentiate u, chain rule, I'll bring down the power 2, differentiate what I have inside as 2, write what is inside the bracket again, then subtract 1 from the power 2. So that's 4 into 2x plus 5. If I differentiate v, I'll easily get 1. So I'll apply product rule, which is v du dx plus u dv dx. In putting everything I have, I have this, so that um, from here, if I go by the option, I have a 2x plus 5 in almost all the options. So let me factorize 2x plus 5 out. The first bracket will remain 4x minus 16. The other one will remain another 2x plus 5. So I have 4x plus 2x to be 6x, minus 16 plus 5 to be minus 11. That is option A. We have y equals x plus sine x sine x. We have to find divide the x when pi nx is pi over 2. This is of the form uv as well. So u is x, v is sine x. If I differentiate u, I'll get 1. If I differentiate cos x, I'll get sine x, I'll get cos x. So the by product rule, v du dx plus u dv dx. If I put in all these values, I will have x sine x is my v, the u dx is 1, u is x, dv dx is cos x. So we have sine x plus x cos x. x is pi over 2. So we put in that. Pi in this case is 90 degrees. So for the ones with the trigonometric function, we can use that. So sine 90 plus pi 2 pi over 2 is cos 90, cos 90 is 0, sine 90 is 1, so we have 1 plus pi over 2 into 0, which is 1. That is option B. We have to look for the, gra the gradient of this curve at x equals 1 is 9, so we have to find the value of k. Gradient is differentiation, so I will get dy dx, that's 4kx plus 1. So I will take this to be equal to 9 at x equals 1, putting the value of x as 1. 4k plus 1 equals 9, 4k is 8, k is 2, option B. Find the rate of change of the volume V of a sphere with respect to its radius R, when R is equal to 1. Volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi R cube, 
so we differentiate the v the r the 3 the power will come down we multiply with the 4 over 3 by r then we subtract 1 from 3 going by the technique of differentiation the 3 we cancel 3 so we have 4 pi r square if i put in my radius r as 1 so i will have 4 pi into 1 square which is 4 pi that is option a the dimension of a rectangle to the greatest area whose perimeter is fixed to be p now the perimeter of a rectangle 2 into l plus b is p that means l plus b will be p over 2 then we will definitely have a square of side p over 2 forming the greatest area and that is option b we have to evaluate this integral so we integrate 2 into 2x minus 3 raised to the power of 2 over 3 this is the opposite of differentiation what we do is first we add 1 to the power 2 over 3 that's 5 over 3 then we repeat that 5 over 3 as our denominator also what we have in the bracket is 2x minus 3 we differentiate that 2x minus 3 and that is the reason for the other two in the denominator so we are done we just simplify the two can cancel two so we are left with this then the three five over three can turn to three over five by the time we change division to multiplication so we have the constant k added to our answer that is option d we have to look for the area bounded by the curve we equate both of them to get our values of x which will serve as our lower limit and upper limit so if i rearrange i have this if i factorize i have this and then um, x plus 3 x minus 1 x equals minus 3 or 1 now let us integrate each of them with the lower and upper limits this will be if you integrate 4 you get 4x and the other one is minus s cube over 3 so we put the lower limit and the upper limit there that's 4 into 1 minus 1 cube over 3 that's for 1 the same thing for the minus 3 we substitute minus 3 so we have 4 minus 1 over 3 then on the other side we have minus 12 plus 27 over 3 that's 3 over number 2 over 3 minus minus 3 that is 6 over number 2 over 3 for the other equation we have 2x plus 1 we integrate that will be x squared plus x so um, we put our, our lower and upper limits 1 squared plus 1 minus 3 square plus minus 3 so we have 1 square plus 1 is 1 plus 1 that's 9 minus 3 2 minus 6 that's minus 4 then we join both of them together we subtract 6 raised to 6 over number 2 over 3 minus minus 4 that will give us the area and that is 10 over number 2 over 3 which is option b we have a bar chart here we have to get the fraction of the total number of cars that is yellow okay let's analyze each of them yellow is three according to the bar chart white is four red is eight green is two blue is six black is two so we add everything up we have 25 so the fraction for yellow will be number of yellow three over 25 that's option c we have histogram here we have to get how many taxis have more than four passengers so from the analysis we have here we have 0 0.5 to 2.5 as 3 the next one is 4 the next one is 7 the next one is 5 the next one is 4 the last one is 1 the red text sinks um, represent those with taxis that are more than four passengers if we add all of them together we have 17 7 plus 5 is 12 12 plus 4 16 plus 1 17 so we have 17 as our answer option d find the square of the mode the mode is the data with the highest occurring frequency the highest frequency we have here is 7 so our mode is 11 the square of the mode will be 11 square which is 121 option d we have to find the mean score straight up just multiply the score and the frequency 4 times 3 12 7 times 5 35 
8 plus 2 16 8 times 2 16 11 times 7 7 7 13 times 2 26 8 times 1 8 then add up everything and divide by the total number of frequency which is 20 we have 174 over 20 that is 8.7 option c for the range of these figures range is highest minus lowest the highest we have here is 3 over 2 the rate the lowest is 1 over 6 when we subtract we have 9 minus 1 over 6 that's 8 over 6 which is 4 over 3 and that is option a find the variance of this first we have the formula for variance but we need to get our mean so the mean we add everything we divide by the number which is six of them so our mean is five so we we'll just go by that formula we have five two minus five the two is gotten from the question the five is the mean we do the same six minus five eight minus five six minus five two minus five six minus five over six but we square each of them so we have minus three square one square 3 square, 1 square, minus 3, and 1 square. So that will give us 9 plus 1, 9 plus 1, 9 plus 1. You can just take 1, 9 plus 1 as 10. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 over 6, that is 5. So the variance is equal to 5. Option C. We have this cumulative frequency curve, and we are asked to get the interquartile range. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So that's option A. Find the number of ways of selecting a subject from 12 subjects for an examination. Question of selection is combination. Question of arrangement is permutation. So we have 12 combination 8. And that will be using this formula and combination R is this. So we have 12 factorial over 12 minus 8 factorial, 8 factorial. So we have 12 factorial over 4 factorial, 8 factorial. So that will be 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. The 8 factorials can cancel out. So we have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 and 3 can cancel the 12. So we are left with this, which is equal to 495. Option C. 6 permutation R is 6. Find 6 permutation R plus 1. First, we start with the permutation formula. 6 factorial over 6 minus r factorial is 6. If I cross, if I get 6 factorial, that's 720. I cross multiply, I have this. I divide both sides by 6, I have 120 equals 6 minus r factorial. Then 5 factorial is 120. The factorial can cancel each other. I have 5 is equal to 6 minus r. From there, r is equal to 1. So going to the question, 6 permutation r plus 1. The R is 1, so we have 1 plus 1, that's 6 permutation 2. Using the same formula, we have 6 factorial over 6 minus 2 factorial, that's 6 over 4 factorial, that's um, 6, 720 over 24, which is 30, option B. We have this distribution. The question is find the probability of picking a blue or white. Um, we have a total of 15 bits. And then blue is 1, white is 5. So 1 plus 5 is 6. So we have 6 over 15 as our answer, which is 2 over 5. Option C. Team P and Q are involved in a game. What's probability that both end in a draw? The options we can have are maybe P wins, maybe Q wins, or maybe the, the game ends in a draw. So we have three options. And the question is asking for one of the options, three possible options. So we have 1 over 3. The only time they can have a draw is 1 out of 3. That is option B.